So this tutorial is about um, freeing up your brushwork and I'm going to look at say Edward Seago painting and uh, take some inspiration from uh, his wonderful brush marks. So let's give it a go. So I'm just going to use big brushes. Um, that's the smallest one I've got, which is a size four. The rest of these are six to 10. And this is 25 centimeters by 30 centimeters canvas panel. I don't think he would have started with much in the way of a drawing. Um, I might just indicate where the land is which is nice and low down here big sky the windmill something like that there so that's as much as we probably need a bit of a land mass there that sail Boat off in the distance. So straight into the sky, big brush. Royal blue there. Uh, any sort of sky blue you could use. And actually, you know, I'm not worried about sticking to the colours on here. But uh, what I'm interested in doing is showing you how I kind of learned to paint loose. Um, and I've still got a lot to learn. Uh, I did lots of master studies. I looked at um, you know, artists that I really admire. Uh, Seago is one of them. And I just looked at replicating his brushwork, his paintings. Um, you know, some people will say, well, you're not producing your own work or whatever, but um, it's how artists have learned how to paint for many, many years. And it's, I'm sure how Seago would have learned as well to copy paintings he admired. So, big brush marks. I'm using the Payne's Grey in there. The colours I've got here is a tiny and white, cabin yellow pale, a design crimson, it's called Royal Blue. Got uh, Ultramarine Blue, Payne's Grey, and Burnt Umber. So, concentrating the light over this side more. I'll have a couple of brushes on the go. So, let's go for some. Yellow in the sky. And it's all going to mix, create this overcast, stormy looking sky. Now it's not a pretty painting. No, and that's what I quite like about a lot of his um, paintings is that, um, you know, it's the brushwork that. Uh, says it all you know does it need to be a pretty painting doesn't have to be the brushwork that i really admire and the way he seemingly just put the paint on just like that got two brushes on the go because i want my brush for dark paint and brush for light paint and this was probably done out on the field. You know, it's something I need to do, probably all we all need to do is go outdoors and paint. Now, obviously, it's not necessarily practical for everybody, but um, if you can, give it a go. This is how he would have learnt as well to uh, be quick and free with his brush marks, by going outdoors and uh, just capturing what he could see in front of him as quickly as possible because that light was changing and with paintings you know studies like this and this is say this is a study you know i'm not you know doing this to say call it my own you know, creation this is a master study showing you, you know, methods you can use to learn to paint This is purely an exercise to, to learn what I can from this painting and then put it into my own works, which will be the works that I'll do when I go outdoors and paint. I would think, you know, he will use big brushes, big broad brush marks like that. And I say there's no point in trying to replicate his marks exactly because it's just not going to happen. 
you know I can look to see where he's got the darks you know, he's got some nice strong darks in here that cloud I just swear that brush around a bit warmer down here I can say over here I'll leave the sky at that in that uh, distant landscape and so I've not laminated this photo, it's just um, on printer paper. Um, I've got the photo on my phone or my tablet, so I can look at higher resolution, you know, image and look at the brushwork. Distant landmass was just great, just created with just a flat shape. Possibly the sea off in the distance there. But in the uh, windmill. You know, and this sort of style of painting is probably seen to be very old fashioned. And, you know, would anybody want to, to paint like this? Well, I certainly do. And uh, I'm sure there's lots of you also would like to. Uh, Paint scenes that are you know, realistic, but in a, a loose fashion. Oh. Brown. To be fair, I just like painting. I like it to look like something Being against abstract artwork, each to their own. Me to say what's good and what's bad. Each with oil paints, it's very forgiving that we can make corrections and whatever we need to do. Needs to be slightly bigger on the top there. He took quite a lot of care with this windmill. Probably throws the uh, the sky into a more dramatic state. Having this fairly controlled. Like the way he painted that windmill, just a few festive marks. That's enough. And by doing this, it gave me confidence to leave those marks in my own work and knowing, well, if Edward Seago, you know, like the sergeant, all that could do it, then you know, why can't we do it as well? Have confidence to those marks. Blue for that. That's slightly more blue in the distance. See, there's a boat there. Distant mass of land which was literally just treated like that just a shape a little bit of a correction that i think my distant land is just a little bit on the dark side and lighten that a little bit and just take it up to the house I 
I've probably got slightly more land than he has on here or on my reference. It may have been cropped. That's fine. I'll just go with that. Uh, go with what I've got. A bit of detail on the back of the, the windmill, which I'll put in afterwards. Right. Foreground is dealt with just big, broad brush marks. I'd feel very uncomfortable doing this. You know, outdoors painting, you know, it takes such confidence to paint so loose like this. Doing these little studies you know, really does help to uh, give you that confidence. I'm using really big brushes for this. But, uh, small brushes, you'll struggle to paint loose. You do need these big brushes to be confident. You know, there's a dark there, and it wasn't an accident. It just adds contrast. You can help by doing this. You can see the decisions that were made in the painting. And you can try and put some of those decisions in your paintings. I'm not sure what this is, but it was just a couple of marks. That would be long grass or something, marsh or whatever. Fresh for some darks in there. That dark there, that again, probably not an accident. It will lead in. And with this scene here, I can hardly tell what anything is really. You know, there's possibly cows there, actually, I can see, which I noticed when I was a bit earlier. And decide to put in what you want. I'm not making a study that is um, to be sold as a forgery or whatever. This is purely an exercise for my own benefit and yours to uh, help free my brushwork up. And the quicker you do it, the more loose it will be. Don't hang about, go for it. And don't worry, if the result isn't good or it didn't work, try again. Move on to the next one, if not. We've got a bit of light off in the distance there. Nicely loaded up brush. So maybe that is some houses off in the distance. Perhaps a beach on the other side of the river, maybe. Who knows? Doesn't matter. It's just a, a bit of interest across there. And doing stuff like this, which I kn know he would have painted this outdoors. I'm pretty sure a lot of his work was done outdoors. It really makes me want to go outdoors and uh, look at myself. Again, there's buildings, houses. Distance there. Sail. That probably, you know, that could be enough as it is. I will make it slightly bigger. at these cows I have the image on my phone got the the image on my phone so I can zoom into any details that I can't really see here um, but you know I'll share this image on um, patreon it's, um, all this stuff here it's just shapes again not an accidental thing to put the light next to the dark there and just have a go you know I'm not as good at painting cows as Seago was and I know that not very good at cows at all for some reason I struggle with them maybe overthinking just paint shapes
Get paint. for that and his painting may have been much larger than this so you know when you're painting small like this it's difficult to um to get the level of detail you would on a larger painting the exercise isn't about painting cows it's about uh, the whole scene the brushwork i find these um bristle brushes great at making these marks that he would have been using bristle brushes i'm pretty sure as well Attention to a bit of detail, which get dark under the, the rooftop there, the chimneys. I can look to see, you know, he used his brush there and just dragged it up. To create look of grass. Okay, we're not looking at replicating it, all of his marks. I'll leave it at that, I think. So quite happy with uh, how that's turned out. I'll pop it in a frame and uh, see whether uh, it would be worthy to sign Edward Seago. Maybe try it as a forgery. I'm only joking. Do little light areas. And this is such fun painting this way where you're just laying on a bit of paint here and there. So there you go, Edward Seago's um, painting, obviously, which was much uh, more interesting than this, but. Um, my interpretation of it you know i'm quite pleased with it that um i enjoyed painting down you know these brush marks loose and just laying that paint down it was a great exercise for that and um you know i think by going outdoors and painting i could improve on that still that uh, capture more spontaneous marks that uh, i'm obviously just on this painting just copying edward seago's marks to a certain degree so um it's an exercise in freeing up and i think it can work for you as well that it certainly worked for me so give it a go good luck if you decide to give it a try thanks for being on patreon and so if you're watching this on youtube think about joining me on patreon all the reference pictures are on there and hundreds of demonstrations that you can follow along to um, so it's worth uh, worth um, considering so there you go on to the next one see you soon bye